word reading in the Bible, Lord. We thank you for keeping us closed in our right mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to edify and build up this ministry, God. And Lord, we love you and we praise you, Jesus. Keep your hands stretched out over us all, God. One by one, name by name, even collectively, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, can you feel God?
situations or some of the relationships or friendships or, or our church issues go through the same stuff because we are not constraining the spirit. The spirit to constrain stuff is missing. The devil put a thought in our head and we act upon it instead of using his word to get the total victory. But tell somebody, I'm calling it out tonight. I looked up the word binding and, and it means to cohere in a single mass. It means to, to be united, to, to join uh, or be to connect it or attach yourself. And when you're going to have God's victory, you got to learn how to attach yourself to the spirit of the Holy Ghost uh, and be able to call the word out over your situation. You got to call the word out over your storms. You gotta call, put the word on some stuff. The Bible says in Matthew, hallelujah, that we, if we speak to the mountain, it shall be moved. See, we need a spiritual lock on some stuff with the power of heaven. And God began to show me as I was in prayer that there is a lack of power in prayer because we're not calling things out. We're not calling because we don't really recognize the spirit of which we're up against. We don't recognize what we're really dealing with in the spirit realm, so we can't call it out. And the only way we can get the victory if we are addressing by the spirit. Sometimes you gotta identify a certain situation in order to call it out. So that word bind means to be connected. It means to join. It means to be united. And God says, until my church unites with me in such a way, connect the, the power source that God is our power source. And if we don't connect with him right, we can't, amen, get heaven to agree with what we're calling out. So God says, I need you to connect with me in such a way that when you open up your mouth, when you call on the name of Jesus, when you say, peace be still, peace has to be still. God says, I need to hear the church be so united with me in this word, so on one accord with me in this word, be like a single man's coherence, join one and one. That means you can't move to your right without the spirit of the Lord moving with you. You can't think a thought wrong without God's word captivating that thought. Because the Bible says, good God Almighty, that when you think of, we have to cast down imaginations and every half thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. But we can't do that if we're not binding uh, our word with the word of the Lord. He says, whatsoever you shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. That means we got to be able to tuck it out. We got to be able to lock some stuff up in the world, in the earth, by locking it up in the spirit. Because Jesus, God says, uh, if you will bind uh, me with what you're getting ready to go through, uh, then I will be able to bound this thing in heaven. The word bound means to place with certain limits or restrictions. What am I saying? So when you are binding with the Holy Ghost uh, and you have something that you need God to do for you, uh, when you speak that thing in the earth, uh, the Bible says that heaven is going to back it up. Uh, the word bound means to place within certain limits. So if we lock it on earth with our tongues uh, and it's biblical and according to the word of God, uh, God will cause a restriction to happen in heaven. Uh, that means he will put certain limits. Uh, that means what you want, don't want to see manifest in your life on earth. We have the power and the authority, hallelujah, and the audacity of hope through the Holy Ghost to be able to call that thing out. So you got to learn how to be able to call some stuff out. If you don't want to see it happening, if you don't want to see it stuck, if you don't want to see the struggle, then you got to learn how to open up your mouth and begin to bind that thing. If I don't want to see my children hurt, or I don't want to see my child in danger. That means I bind in advance uh, the spirit of danger upon them. So when I speak it out of my mouth in the earth, uh, that means that God is going to bound it in heaven. He's going to restrict what I've said uh, from preventing it in heaven. But we got to learn how to open up our mouth. The Bible says that there is power and life and death are in the power of the tongue. So you're binding with the Holy Ghost that the word of God will connect with us in such a way like some of this other Tell somebody, call it out. 
word bound means to put certain limits or restrictions. Heaven allows what we allow. And disallow what we disallow. But God is asking us tonight if we can just use the authority and the power like he's given us that we should use it. Whatever we don't want to see, we don't have to see it. Whatever we don't want to feel, we don't have to feel it. Whatever we don't want to do, we don't have to do it. But the Bible says you have to learn how to bind and let God bound it. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. See, by the same authority that we have the ability to stop the works of the enemy is by the same authority that we have the ability to lose some stuff from heaven. It's by that same authority that we can stop and start uh, things to happen in our life. Why are we struggling? That brings me back to the question. Why do we continue to go through the same thing over and over again? I want to talk about some couple, a couple of things that we need to call it out and we're going to be done in the Word tonight. Yes. The first one is we got to decree. Tell somebody, decree it. Decree it. Means you got to order it to be so. Order it to be so. You got to decree a thing. The Bible says in Job that thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. But again, this goes back to knowing where your authority is in the word of God, knowing what you have access to in the word of God, knowing the power that God has given us to operate in the earth. You've got to learn how to decree a thing, means to bring it to form, bring it to order. Not only decree, but double up. Princess was talking about it. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. See, a lot of times, princes, we are not doubling up. We are not joining, not just with the Word or with the Holy Ghost, but we don't have real prayer partners that we can call on to touch and agree with to say, I need you to go into prayer with me concerning this thing. But the Bible says that if any two of you, see, it don't take a whole army, amen, to get your breakthrough. It don't take, amen, a whole, all the Bible talks about was Gideon and his army. All it takes is just two or three. Whatever two or three are gathered in his name, there is he in the midst. God can do exploits. God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think just by the power of two. All you need is you and the Holy Ghost. All you need is you and your prayer partner. Or all you need is you and your pastor. All you need is you and another saint to be able to touch and agree. But a lot of times we keep stuff to ourselves. We close our mouths when the enemy wants us to shut up when we need to be speaking. The enemy wants you to pray. Uh, that God wants you to pray when the enemy wants you to be in messy. But you got to learn how to know when to speak and when to double up. Sometimes you got to call in those that God has equipped with the power and the anointing of prayer. The Bible says, if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything. So that goes back to the question, what are we lacking and why are we lacking with we're touching and agreeing? But if we don't double up according to the word, and we don't get together with the word of God. We can't see the power of God manifesting for the church. So not only do we decree it, not only do we double up, but then we got to demand. I used to wonder why my grandmother would walk around the house uh, demanding and commanding. She's like, I mean, I command you, devil, in the name of Jesus, to uh, loose my child. She would pray for my mother. She would pray for us. She would pray over her house. She would pray, amen, over my great-grandmother's job. She would pray for us. I mean, it was, I was wondering, why is she doing all of this command? Why is she walking around the house, hmm, and in the spirit? Why, what is she doing? But I understand now that I've got more in this word. She was making a command on heaven. She was demanding her house be in order. She was demanding her family or uh, making a command on heaven uh, to have things operated decently and in order. And it had to be in line with what the word of God says. So she was calling it out. That means everything that she didn't want to see happening uh, when the enemy started coming in and, and fighting and doing this and doing that, causing disruption and discord and all of this stuff. My grandmother was a, 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 a key woman, prayer warrior, and calling stuff out. And we got to know how to call those things we got to know how to call things out when the enemy is coming up against you like a flood. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him, but we're too quiet in the Holy Ghost. We're too 
just walk around seeking whom he may devour, and we're not putting a demand, we're not walking in the power and the authority saying, God, I need you to be God in this thing. Somebody say, I need you to demand. When you demand something, you put it, you put insistent, uh, uh, an insistent request to it. That means, like the Bible says in Judges, how that the woman that the enemy was constantly uh, nagging and constantly on her trail and doing this and doing that. The Bible says she kept on coming before the judge. And that's how we have to learn how to do, even when God, it seems like God ain't answered our prayer yet. You got to learn how to still demand and still command. And sometimes we give up too easily and we give up too quick. But you got to learn how to be consistent in your prayer life. Be persistent. With your calling on the name of Jesus, be persistent uh, when you're calling those things and not that's not that's good at work. Tell somebody you gotta call it out, and somebody is waiting on your language, uh, they're waiting on your prayer, they're waiting on you to be in agreement, uh, they're waiting on the church to get together to call on the name of Jesus uh, and call it out. Uh, and go back again to I said we don't know how to call stuff out uh, because we don't recognize what's up against us. Uh, What? 